morning from Scala on Patmos. It's a beautiful Saturday morning, if a bit humid. I already had to take out the lens cloth and wipe down the lens of this camera and its screen. Uh, it shouldn't be much past about 80 degrees Fahrenheit today, uh, roughly 25 centigrade, but the humidity is about 100%. So, uh, a little laundry last night, got the safari shirt all cleaned up, and we're ready for the day. I'm gonna go hit the streets in a moment. Calispera, it is now afternoon on Patmos. city behind me. The city is a bit of a stretch. And the beautiful blue waters of the Aegean Sea as it comes into port here and onto this slightly rocky beach. Scala is holy here. Aurora is known as Scala. And ostensibly in Scala in Greek is stairs. So we have quite a scala on the little uh, promontory over here. But probably also in the town. flying. It is good to be back in Greece. And this time for good. We're here for another two weeks. So there's a lot more to come. What you saw in Kios was just a taste of what we've got in store. So as we go around this port that is dominated by the onward, and not to give Azamara too much free advertising, uh, but traveling on a much smaller ship allows you access to places like Patmos that simply have no facilities to accommodate a large ship from one of the big American cruise ship companies. The ferries do serve Patmos, and I still think that if you're traveling for a long period of time in the Greek Isles, that the ferries really are your best bet. They're a lot of fun to get around on. When you're not in so much in the high season, you have a lot more opportunities to um, travel and stay in hotels, spend a few days per island, and then move on on the ferries. You saw the problems that I had on in Kushidasha yesterday trying to get to Samos Island, uh, whether there was space that I could have gotten on the ferry or not. The internet said no, and the trouble that it was to, to go in and out of the, the borders again and again uh, didn't merit finding out that there really was no room uh, on either of those little ferries, and they were very small ferries serving Samos from Kushidasa. Lots of little cafes here, just starting to open up for the day. A shady spot here and a shady spot there. Patmos is best known as the home of St. John. He was exiled to Patmos from the city of Ephesus. Uh, for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he came here and he wrote about the end of the world and Patmos often just as a as a as a cliche is known as the end of the world island because of the writing of the revelation and there are a lot of sites dedicated to St. John on Patmos and in a little while uh, once again we're going to try to secure a rental car for a few hours and get out and explore more than just the horror. But for right now, we're just taking a look at the horror. Got a mini moak. Looks like a real one, not one of the replica ones that's just been made lately. 
quite a contrast in the Mercedes taxi cab. The 6.3 liter AMG Mercedes probably isn't one, but it's been dolled up to resemble one. We'll take a walk over to the ferry port. And we also have a large luxury yacht in port as well. Atmos is also served by a small bus service. As I've mentioned before, if you just want to go around a little bit and use the bus system, a lot of these islands, I hope I didn't make you drop that. <laughs> the bus systems are uh, very reliable in relative terms. Uh, and if it, if it gets you out, for cheap money, you can do that. Of course, you can always take a taxi as well. It's really pretty how the hill overlooking the Hora is not grossly overbuilt. As you would expect, lots of little side streets with shop, shopping and cafes. Almost walked in the back of that scooter. The port entrance for both the big yachts and of course the ferries. It looks as though the ferries are out for the day. And there are also day cruises offered by a few different vendors. And these are all lined up here on this end of the port. There appears to be a small beach resort as well on the opposite side. And then some long-term tie-ups of some larger yachts people staying a little longer. We'll see if we can get a profi the profile of that large yacht there. Behind the tour boat. Like Kios, a popular marina for those with uh, more than more than average means. Archimedes, a beautiful yacht, the way to travel, really not much smaller than our ship, the one family version and the family size version. So we'll come back into the Hora and just do a little more walking. And then I've got to go get someone and we'll go get a car. Of course, another great way to get around is scooters, small motorbikes. This is a mountainous island. So scooters and motorbikes probably very fun. And they are everywhere. This looks like the main stretch of the cafes. There are tourist shops, but it's not overwhelming. The crowds aren't overwhelming. There's no choke points, really. It's more Greece for the Greeks and for European Mediterranean tourists, again, who use the ferry system or who just come for a number of days. 
and I believe they have to use the ferries to get here as there's no large airport on Patmos. The options are probably limited to Kos, which does have a large airport. That's a nearby island off the Turkish coast near Bodrum. I believe Bodrum is also the airport that serves Kushidasa, uh, as well as ferries from as far away as Piraeus and Athens. And of course Santorini, Mykonos, for those looking to do more ferry hopping. Since we're in the eastern Aegean and still very close to Turkey, those are the options. Or scooter parking as far as the eye can see. We hit a dead end. Let's see if we can find our way just around a little bit more without letting that happen again. Here we go. And here we have jewelers and beachwear, glasses, handbags. But we're not overwhelmed by the tourist fare as much other than for items of necessity to enjoy summertime weather. more clothing, and then we come into an area with cafes. She's taking a picture of it, so I will too. The rental car agencies run even this far in. And though this appears to be the end of the road, I think it bends around a little bit before it goes up the hill. If that's the way I'm going anyway, I think I've already managed to get turned around. I don't know that you can make it out, but the fortress on that hill is one I hope to get to a little while from now quite a large castle up there. Just a nice sea breeze here today. It's really only about 80 degrees, but it's quite humid. As I noted earlier, my camera lens was fogging up, and when I walked down off the ship, I had forgotten a lens cleaning cloth, but I think it's cleared off. We'll find out. If we're a little blurry today, my apologies. I'll be carrying my full kit when we go out later. Into more of a residential district. And we have things like supermarkets and mini markets, a pharmacy. This has a lot more of a local feel than on the immediate coastline. A cute little chapel. I don't know whether it's been in just certain places or whether it is just not appreciated, but I've seen more signs prohibiting filming, photography, and so on in the Greek churches, uh, and I'm just careful about doing that. Some people are not. If it's a sign of disrespect, I simply uh, don't want to do that. And we're starting to go up into the hills. 
another shot of the fortress way up there. Again, we're going to try to get up there by car a little while later. Well, we did it. We've got the car. And we're way up on a hill. It's a beautiful afternoon in Patmos. Maybe you think it's cliche that I say it's a beautiful, but it is. There's the perfect haze, there's the perfect blue. Down there. We're at a nice high point overlooking uh, Scala. Now, I learned something as we're coming out of town. Scala is not the Hora. The Hora is about four and a half clicks or kilometers from Scala. So we're going to try to find our way to Hora uh, and then, as I said, up to where that castle is. We're going to try something a little different here. We're running a new camera called the FiuTech Pocket 3 where the uh, gimbal camera detaches from the uh, remote handle. So I'm shooting some backup video with the old DJI Osmo as well as the audio, and we're just gonna see how it comes out. So if it comes out, great, tell me so. Uh, and uh, I may add to the comments a little bit later that, you know what, it just didn't work as well. But uh, in any event, when I saw this product come out, this was, a, this was exactly what came to mind, this and doing some driving around Santorini. So right now we're coming down a little lane here that we came up earlier thinking we were going to get somewhere special and didn't. Uh, but that's all the fun of adventure. Hello, now we got the scooter man here. I've been using the Fiu Tech Pocket 3 for about uh, four days, mostly through Turkey, uh, with very little use of the old DJI. Uh, the DJI uh, definitely builds uh, arm strength, if not uh, personal strength and character. It is a little bit older uh, unit, but it is a very good three-axis gimbal camera. So, uh, we're going to try to head down, rather than going back up that hill, uh, down towards where we think the Hora is. Our little Citroen automatic is uh, doing okay. As yesterday in Turkey, in Kushidashi, uh, health and safety is not uh, real high on the on the list of priorities here in these uh, little islands close to Turkey and on, on Turkish mainland. Uh, you will not see a lot of guardrails or safety protections against uh, pitching yourself off the side of a hill. So if you do decide to come here and uh, scooter and drive, uh, Araga, Araga in Greece means, uh, in Greek rather, means slow. Araga. That's why they give you very good advice. Araga. Painted on the road. So let's see up here. We have municipal parking, free admission to something, and a beautiful church, a little cafe here. These people may want to go up this little street, but they're not going up there. And we're going down towards the water now, so in order to get back to the coral, we're going to have to go a little bit different direction. this day, though it's coming through quite clearly on my screen, I don't think I can capture this day quite as vividly as I'm seeing it, but believe me, it is a beautiful day on Patmos.
when I come to these Greek islands for the first time, such as I am here today, um, I love to do exploring. And sometimes it's 30 dead ends before you really get to know something well, but in the case of, say, Santorini, I can find my way around pretty well, having been there a number of times. And it is one of my favorite Greek islands to drive. The roads are reasonably good, and that what it gets you to is excellent. Uh, there's such a concentration of quality things to look at, to see, to go do. You know, here we're coming into a little beach area here in Patmos. I'm not sure what town this is. He's probably going to turn us in for having a camera in the car and my holding one in my hand. Normally also I get a manual transmission car and today I didn't get one of those, uh, mostly because I figured I would be holding cameras. And if you like driving a stick and sporting around, uh, that's great, but you do need to be careful uh, in, in Greece. And I found that I'm having to turn in a little bit of my car enthusiast card, uh, giving up the auto, giving up the manual for the automatic. We've got Vagia to one direction and Lumpy to the other, so I think we're going to head towards Lumpy. We've just got a beautiful vista here at the moment. Wanted to share it with you overlooking the ocean. We're still on the way to Lampy. And we've got a really tight turn here. Some of these Greek islands have some massive hills. Having been more than likely volcanoes or the remnants of giant volcanic explosions such as happened in Santorini a couple thousand years ago or more. really steep drops and that they were able to build roads through here is nothing short of remarkable. And it looks like we're just coming down into a parking area. Like I said, it's the mistakes that you make that sometimes give you the greatest rewards anyway. Well, we've come back to Scala. And our transmission is still acting up a little bit on the Citroën, but I think we'll get through the rest of the day. This time we're going to make it to the Hora. We got a little turned around, but we did go to a lot of the southern end of the island, and now we have to go uh, towards the northern end. And hopefully that will take us up to the fortress that I continue to promise you. But another little tour of the Hora, this time by car, or of the Scala city, town, this time by car. A little different view. Try not to run over our fellow passengers on the ship and citizens and what have you. Now if that was the Miata that I saw in Kios, no it isn't, it's got many more stickers on it. White Miatas are big in the Greek islands. And you can see why, the roads are a lot of fun. Can't go fast, but you can have a good time, that sounds just like what you do at a Miata. So as we come back by the post office and the port, we're looking for the road to Hora. And it's right up there. Pass right by the ship where we came out of the port. Look for the couple of stones. And a right turn.
Big time traffic in the Greek Isles. Mini Cooper. Another great Greek Isles car. And now we go. Lately I've been learning more Greek using the Duolingo system on the computer. And I did it initially to just have a little familiarity, read road signs, menus, uh, my experience in learning different languages is I have a hard time retaining vocabulary, which is normally the problem people have when they are doing that. Uh, but I recognize certain elements, certain words, and I'm good with grammar, so it has uh, helped me considerably. And I am able to read a lot of the signs and identify things I might not otherwise be able to. So I find myself in a fortunate position. I'm going to keep trying. Hora is to the left three kilometers. Shotlakas. And we have left the Poli of Scala as we scale the hill. Slower and slower due to our friend on the scooter. The castle is ahead, so the castle, I'd wager, is in Hora. Here we have a hospital. If you get sick on Pop Nose, that's where you go. Health Center. Ah, the House of the Apocalypse is here, so we will be coming back through here, fortunately. We do not have the overtaking power for the scooter, given the Citroen's reluctance to go down into first gear. Probably having, oh, and a Mercedes taxi is overtaking us. That's nice. I think we will see you at the top. So unfortunately, from this point on, the audio was not working. So I'm doing this uh, in the recording studio. And uh, here we are driving up to the Hora. This is with, by the way, the FiuTech uh, recording uh, video from the roof of the car. And I'm actually joystick controlling it from inside the car. And uh, it, it, the, the resolution's very, very good. We get a little bit of fisheye from it. But uh, the idea that I had that I would be able to record uh, video stuck to the car was only slightly dampened by that I'm unable to record audio from the remote handle that the unit offers. So if you're looking for a small action camera, uh, this has a great sensor, a really good lens for its size, and few tech who are known for their gimbals on drones and such, a uh, really compact package that works very well. So uh, just a little bit displeased with them as a company for reasons I won't go into here. So here we are again, we're coming back up to the Hora from the other side, I actually bypassed it a little bit. So this, uh, we, we, we drove by the nearest place that you could drive a car, as it turns out, we do not have a fortress or a castle, though it may have been at one time, but a large monastery uh, of St. John. Uh, and that's really all that the Hora is in uh, Patmos. And here we are approaching it, and shortly we'll come over and park on the side of the road. So looking down at Scala from a, 
the road where we parked to go into Hora, um, a really spectacular view of Scala, and then looking up at the monastery in Hora from the uh, main road and then the little access road that dead ends uh, with some parking spaces. And I saw some people trying to go up and park and uh, saw them then subsequently turn around. So I just parked down on the main road and uh, went for a little bit of a stroll. So in retrospect, uh, I didn't know then what I know now. I was expecting to find uh, the better part of a town. And uh, what I found was a lot of residences ostensibly for the monks uh, and probably for private people as well. But there is very little in the way of commerce up here. So when I stated earlier that Scala was the horror of Patmos, I was not entirely incorrect. Uh, and here we are again looking down at Scala from this uh, road and climbing up the hill to uh, where you can walk up into Hora. Now, uh, this is a, uh, a hiker's dream and somebody with any kind of disabilities nightmare. There are a lot of little steps coming, which you will see as I continue up this hill. So we're just uh, making our way up here in the video. Now a little closer to the top, we welcome you to our holy monastery. Please be aware that you are in a holy place of the worship of God. Proper attitude and dress are therefore requested. So this started to answer questions uh, that I had uh, that I couldn't find any other answers to. I suppose I could have done a lot of extensive research. But apart from this little cafe on the left, and a few other very small establishments, such as a, uh, an art store I ran into later that was giving away some books, and you'll see that. Uh, really, there was just uh, residential spaces, homes, and so on. So there are private homes, as you see there, home sweet home. Uh, but uh, just it, uh, an air of mystery pervaded uh, my walk through horror. Uh, it's a great walk. Don't get me wrong, another cafe up here with uh, traditional Greek fare did not appear to be open. And, uh, and there we have an ATM, uh, the monastery that way, windmills. And of course, I am always a sucker for stairs because stairs always go somewhere. So typical chip, I've gone up the stairs and I'm looking down the stairs and see more stairs to go up. So I'm getting my cardio today, if nothing else and a little stair here, a little stair there. And it's reminiscent of many places in the Greek Isles, uh, though dissimilar from other places in the Greek Isles, uh, these stairs ended up uh, being a bit of a fool's errand, uh, though very scenic, uh, very, very pretty little niches in here. Uh, something was starting to tell me right at about this point that I was maybe getting a little more adventurous than I needed to be, but then again, I've found that I've walked all over creation and I'm looking at these little stairs and say, well, either this is really going to get me somewhere like the backside of the Acropolis where there's a little set of stairs like this uh, or not. And in this case, it was not. And you know what you do? You just turn back around and try again. So having backtracked from the dead end, I had to go back down a little bit and snake around. And I'm looking around and I'm saying, where is the town? And uh, unless I've just gone entirely the wrong way and there's a lovely town with more shops and cafes and so on, uh, I haven't seen it. But then again, I have an unerring knack for doing that. So, you know, here I'm looking, oh, follow the, follow the running water or something along those lines. Oh, look, there's a guy. And turn down, hmm, maybe not. He's coming from there. He's wondering, what the hell is this guy doing? But uh, it was starting to look like daylight up there. And I said, well, that must be it. So up I went and around this bend. And uh, we did get into, into something up here. We got up to the side of the monastery walls, the fortress or castle walls here just after a little bit. A lovely little vista on somebody's patio and the uh, the cats that these Greek islands are so famous for. But uh, hadn't quite gotten there, but there is the first sign. We've got the little chapel uh, with the bell and the pole. 
So appropriate. Way up here. Right next to someone's home. And we continue through this narrow passageway. And there it is, the Monastery of St. John. Though we didn't go in the front door, we've sort of gone around the uh, construction entrance here. And up another flight of stairs. And just looking up where the white paint ends, where the whitewashing ends on the walls, are the classic stones of this medieval era monastery, possibly at one time a crusader's fortress having survived so much Turkish occupation of this island for probably a few hundred years. And though it said, do not enter, the gate was wide open. So I started venturing around and I started to hear uh, voices in the distance once I got a little bit behind it. But uh, this is probably something very few people see up here. And this vista overlooking um, this end of the island, which itself is the southern end of the island, I got completely turned around while I was on Potmos. I thought north was south and south was north, and I just wasn't, I guess I just wasn't thinking clearly. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to process all this new information, so excuses, excuses. But um, I got down here around this back wall, and there's a, there's a, a what appears to be either a newer buttressing or, or some other work here on the back wall here but uh, just captivating scenery, looking up from the very top here in Patmos. So free books, free books at the art store, a lot of uh, fine titles in German language, which is very interesting. Maybe many of the monks that come here are Germans and that's what they've been reading. But uh, sort of a, uh, a an appeal to tourists unknown uh, from this interesting little art store uh, that was about the only commercial enterprise of any note that I came across apart from the ATM and two cafes uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, the rest of this being a very peaceful place to live uh, with a beautiful view down to Scala. So we progressed uh, down through these archways and I saw my first people and scooters and things, and I said, oh, I must finally be coming to town. I found the town. I didn't find town, I found the town hall, uh, which is that building down at the end of the And uh, a few little monuments. And really that was about it. And uh, a few more signs for the monastery and some flags of the Greek Orthodox Church. So clearly this whole uh, town, this horror of Patmos is a, an enclave for the monastery and not just this monastery, but also the one that is halfway between uh, Hora and Scala. And now I don't have the, uh, we can look at the inscription on that a little bit later. But um, this was the monastery of St. John. Uh, and then farther down is the monastery of the Cave of the Apocalypse, uh, where St. John wrote the revelation uh, in the New Testament. But uh, limited parking up here, uh, I suppose, for uh, people who work in these offices or the town hall. Uh, the offices likely just being uh, having to do with the, the monastery, I would imagine, uh, because I could see really no signs of any other kinds of businesses in this uh, in this town, in this horror. So headed back down to the car from where we were way up there at the monastery and just walking down the uh, the pathway back to the road that leads down to the main road. There are the windmills that the sign referred to. Uh, I don't see any other commercial establishments over there much as you would on, uh, say, in Mykonos Hora uh, or Ia or a place like that. And we'll, we'll be in Ia uh, very hopefully tomorrow. So should you go up to the Hora, and here I am saying whatever it is I'm saying about visiting 
uh, on Patmos and going to the Hora, I do think you should go to the Hora uh, because it is an integral part of what makes Patmos so important, and that is the legacy of St. John the Apostle. And this monastery is one of the two places, and we're about to go to the second place, uh, really dedicated to his life, his work, and his importance in the Christian tradition, uh, both in Greece and uh, really all over the world, uh, given the importance that he had as one of the uh, gospelers of the word of Jesus Christ. So, uh, yes, I think you should come to Patmos and to the Hora. As I had mentioned earlier, uh, about halfway down the hill from Hora to Scala is the cave of the uh, St. John's Cave of the Apocalypse, Holy Cave of the Apocalypse, and it quotes the passage from Revelations, uh, I was on the island of Patmos, and so he was indeed. Unfortunately, this exhibit uh, supported by the Greek Ministry of Culture, which is so tied to the Greek Orthodox Church, uh, had rather strange hours. It had been open for a little while in the morning and then closed for a fair portion of the afternoon and then in the late afternoon and evening uh, back open. So here it is again in Greek, uh, the same words and uh, signs for a taxi and what have you. So I figured, well, since it's not gated off, I suppose we can walk in here and see what we see. So down this stone passageway, you've got these stairs that go up to uh, what appeared to be sort of a recreation yard, and then there's the monastery and the chapel, uh, much smaller than the one in the Hora, um, just at the other end. So another reminder that this is a place of worship and to dress and speak and uh, treat it respectfully. Uh, it's amazing that people don't have common sense and require signs like that, but there you go. So, as we make our way up to the chapel, the sign for the sacred cave, uh, I did some walking after this and was unable to find uh, anything other than this building, so I assume that the building encompasses uh, St. John's Cave. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site if the sign comes through. Uh, sadly, had a chunk broken off of it, uh, hopefully not by a vandal. And if you'll just look at these old steps where over hundreds of years monks have, have stepped, and it just calls to mind the importance of Patmos, the importance of St. John's legacy, given that he was banished from Ephesus uh, just after the time of Jesus Christ. During his lifetime, he was with Jesus Christ and uh, was actually uh, his Holy Mary's, uh, his mother's uh, caretaker in Ephesus, saw to her well-being prior to leaving. There's that recreational yard. So as was said by Genghis, Genghis, um, on the uh, bus riding over to Ephesus yesterday, the, the clips of his talk and his lecture uh, I put into my footage of Ephesus because it was really so good. I apologize for the resolution not being as good. Uh, but the importance of John, uh, the importance of early Christianity in Greece, you know, taking out the uh, pantheism of the Greco-Romans, uh, and that timeline is, is really important, really fascinating, because this is the birth not just of the Christian tradition, uh, but the extension of the Judeo-Christian tradition into lands that were pantheistic. Uh, and it's, uh, one, one wonders, you know, exactly what that timeline was, but one also has to wonder, is Patmos one of the cradles of Christianity because John was here? And John clearly had to have been uh, ministering to and preaching to uh, people here, just as St. Paul did with his letters and with his teachings and his speaking and lectures uh, during his lifetime as well. And just a last look down at Scala, I was on the path of the Cave of the Apocalypse and uh, was trying to figure out just how much farther I'd have to go to find it. And then, you know, reason overtook. And I said, you know, it's probably within that chapel building that you see through the trees there. But uh, on the walk and the drive back down to Scala, thinking about all these great vistas, 
you know, it is definitely worth going to Patmos, and I fully guarantee that I will return for a lot more exploration of this island. Well, thanks for watching Travel with Chip. We're sorry about the sound issues today. I had to dub over a lot of that uh, footage from earlier uh, after we took the camera off of the car. Uh, growing pains with the Fiu Tech. But uh, subscribe and share. And thanks for all your support. We're leaving Patmos right now on our way with next stop, Santorini.